This video is brought to you by FulfillRight. If you've followed the news lately, you've probably seen that a lot of goods are in short supply. Everything from semiconductors to sausage, rental cars to lumber has been hard to come by. You can blame the pandemic for many of these shortages, sure, but the underlying issues are more complex. And one of those issues, inventory management practices. The last decade was defined by lean supply chains. Everything was shipped just in time with little buffer for disruptions. This was really good for efficiency and profits, but really bad for handling unexpected events. So with that in mind, we're going to talk about what inventory management is and how you can do it well. By following these tips, you can reduce your risk of running out of stock when you need it. That means more money in your pocket, more happy customers, and a generally less stressful life as a business owner. But before we get to that, a quick note. If you need help fulfilling orders, look no further. We've worked with hundreds of companies and would be happy to help you with yours too. Go to fulfillright.com open to request a quote today. Link in the description. All right, back to the show. What is inventory management? And why does it matter? When you boil it down to the basics, inventory management is the process of tracking where products are, where they're going, and when to order more. That's really it. Simple as the concept may seem though, the practice is hard. You have to monitor a lot of moving parts while simultaneously predicting the future a la demand estimation. It looks easy until you have to do it, but it's worth building your skill set because mastering inventory management best practices has many benefits for your business. We can think of four right here. You'll be less likely to run out of stock. That means your customers can keep shopping anytime they please. You'll be less likely to have too much stock. Holding on to excess inventory costs money and storage, not to mention the sunk costs of ordering too much in the first place. Good inventory management will help keep you from overordering in the first place. You'll have higher profits. Good inventory management helps you know what to sell, which increases revenue, while also helping you keep costs in check. You'll benefit from better cash flow. If you get a sense of how much to spend and when to spend it, you won't find yourself overcommitting large sums of money to buy more products when the time is not good. In short, inventory management helps you find a balance between two extremes. You don't want to run out of items and you don't want to hoard them. And this is the process by which you find that happy medium. Eight main types of inventory. The whole idea of inventory management is to keep track of where products and other materials are so you have visibility into the day-to-day -day operations of your business. Yet not all inventory is the same and in order to have a meaningful conversation about it, you have to categorize inventory into different types. One, raw materials. These are the materials you use to create your products. Even if you are not the manufacturer of your products, it's important to pay attention to the availability of raw materials. Two, unfinished products. These are the products that you or your manufacturer are currently working on making but are not ready to sell. Three, finished products. These are the products that are ready to sell right now. They're often stored in a warehouse or fulfillment center such as our own. Four, in transit goods. These are goods that are being transported somewhere else such as finished goods en route to the warehouse or to the customer. Five, cycle inventory. This is inventory which are bought from a manufacturer or other supplier and is shipped directly to your customer. This is the only kind of inventory present in drop shipping businesses for example. Six, buffer inventory. Also known as safety stock, this is the inventory you keep around in case something bad happens that prevents you from getting the additional inventory that you need. 7. Packing inventory. This is the kind of inventory you keep for your packing supplies, such as finished packaging or even bubble wrap or mailers. And then there is 8. MRO inventory. This is the inventory needed for maintenance, repair, and operations, hence MRO. This supports the production process and is not what goes out to your customers. That brings us to 9 tips for inventory management, or how you avoid running out of stock. Find good inventory management software. You can manage inventory by hand or in a spreadsheet and that's fine for a little while. It doesn't scale well though. If you want to keep track of your inventory while minimizing upkeep, look into inventory management software. Some good options include OrderHive, Zoho, and even QuickBooks. Categorize your inventory by priority. Not all inventory is the same. It helps to categorize your inventory so you can understand which inventory is moving and which inventory is making you money. Experts typically suggest segregating your inventory into A, B, and C groups. Items in the A group are higher ticket items that you need fewer of. Items in the C category are lower cost items that turn over quickly. The B group is what's in between. Items that are moderately priced and move out the door more slowly than C items, but more quickly than the A items. By prioritizing inventory using an ABC system, you'll come to find that most of your profits will come from a relatively small amount of your stock. This is the Pareto principle or 80-20 rule at work. If you need to narrow down your focus 
focus in order to effectively manage your inventory, consider focusing on just the 20% of your inventory that brings most money. Keep track of all relevant data. Inventory management requires keeping track of a lot of different types of data. That includes SKUs, barcodes, countries of origin, product values, lot numbers, HS codes, and a lot more. Using your inventory software of choice, make sure that you are rigorous about tracking all the relevant data for each type of item that you carry. It may also be a good idea to track information like the cost of the item, its seasonal sales pattern, and whether or not there are hard to come by supplies that go into its manufacturing. Having data organized like this will help you find answers to unpredictable questions that may arise as your day-to-day -day business operations take place. Monitor sales. Ultimately, every company wants and needs to make money. The best way to keep doing this is to observe which items are bringing in the most revenue. But what do you look for when you monitor sales? A few things come to mind. How much is each item making? Are there seasonal patterns to sales? Do the sales for one item increase the sales for other items? Do you tend to sell more on specific days of the week or times of the day? Get a feel for sales cycles. After enough sales monitoring, you will start to see how sales cycles work. You can then use this information to sell to customers when they are most likely to be buying. You can also use this information to make sure you have new stock ready to go for whenever the next round of sales is going to come in. Be proactive about quality control. Customers expect your products to be good ones. If someone's first experience with your brand involves a dud product, then they probably aren't going to come back. If a regular customer has a bad experience, they might be a little lenient, but only if it doesn't happen again. For every new batch of inventory you receive, it's worth your time to test the merchandise. This is doubly true if something has changed recently that may affect the quality of the product. Better safe than sorry. Make sure you have a good returns process. Returns are part of life in retail. This is especially true e-commerce where return rates can be 30% or higher, you need to make sure that you have a good returns process. Part of that returns process will involve figuring out what to do with the inventory when it is received once more. Some returns can be put back into inventory and resold, others need to be thrown away, and still others may need repair or refurbishment. No matter what the case is, make sure you have well-defined processes for inventory management when the returns inevitably come in. Order your own restocks, at least at first. Once you have a feel for your inventory cycles, you will also have a feel for when to restock. At first, order restocks on your own. Even the best software or account managers cannot always see all the variables that are necessary to know when to order more inventory. Once you determine the pattern in your decision to restock, then it's time to delegate to someone else. Conduct regular audits. No matter how good you are at tracking inventory, you will occasionally make mistakes. Sometimes an item isn't scanned on the way out. Other times it's stolen from your store or warehouse. These things happen. Every once in a while, be it annually or weekly, it is worthwhile to audit your inventory and find out how much you truly have. Nothing is quite as uncomfortable as thinking you have 100 items in stock when you actually have none. Good inventory management practices can help you keep your customers happy and your profits healthy. The basic process of keeping inventory is simple, but when when done with an understanding of good inventory management principles, it can give you a real leg up on the competition. If you've watched this video and you feel like you need help getting your inventory shipped, we'd like to help. Fulfillrite is the most trusted name in order fulfillment. Boost customer satisfaction and scale your business faster with a logistics partner that feels like an extension of your team. Services include same-day shipping, real-time order and inventory tracking, dedicated customer service, and volume-based discounts. Go to fulfillrite.com open to request a quote today. Link in the description. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you liked it, take a moment to to like and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to ring the bell too so you can see the videos as soon as they drop. And now a parting question. What's the last thing you tried to buy but couldn't because it was out of stock? Let us know in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you.